All right, I'm just loading up into this one now. So I, I have no idea if this was game one or game two. The new new. All right. Okay. All right. While they're getting to lane, I like the I like the Zaya. I really like Zaya's design. Really fun. It's great. But Cho'Gath mid. This is it's, it's a fun team comp. I'm not gonna lie. Um, but once again, I mean, I guess they can team fight well with it, and they have some good CC. But overall, it's still gonna be kind of like a, a somewhat of a pick comp, and they're looking for that invade for the wards again. I like that the Roaming is a team to do this to get vision down and see where they're starting. I do, I do like that. Um. But yeah. Minions have spawned. I think Set might be able to trade okay against the Olaf early, but eventually he's not gonna have any kill pressure on him. And that's fine. That's not who's gonna be looking to have kill pressure on eventually anyway. Um. But Olaf's going to be a great front line later, I think. And then they've just got a disgusting team fight with... Okay, even get the blue steel right off the bat. Okay. Um, yeah, but they've got a disgusting team fight and some great CC to bring along with them. Um, so. Oh, and looking for the level 2 gank. Oh my gosh. Getting the flash out early. What a move. Uh, uh, I don't know if I hate myself for saying this, but like, that was a Giga Chad start. And he's going for another gank right off the bat? Or no, okay, never mind. Okay, I thought he was going mid with that. Nah, that makes more sense. Okay. I just love it. Like, Oh. Okay. All right. See, I know he brought ignite, and I just was talking about the TP, uh, the the first game. But clearly, clearly, it benefited him early, and against an Olaf, I will say there's a lot of benefit against the Olaf in their early levels, um, because of the the life steal that he gets at low health. So he secured first blood, got out without giving up a kill. Great play. Um, I'm not gonna hate on the ignite this game. Um, I need the scoreboard back up though. Um, so yeah, we to get boots and cloth armor. I don't know. I mean, I guess I think I would have liked. Like maybe a long sword or something to really push the advantage here, but um, and he needs to be he needs to be pushing this wave into the turret to reset. Otherwise, Olaf is just gonna freeze right there. That's gonna be brutal. Okay, what's going now, bot? But yeah, overall, I would still give the draft advantage over to the red side again and. Uh, but not like by a large margin. Um, uh, yeah, that was unfortunate. Yeah, they got a kill off of that and all of this. Oh, they didn't, they didn't get the Zaya flash. I thought they did. But yeah, that is a bit unfortunate. Um... You can see the power of the Nautilus and Zaya here, like, as far as being able to, like, root people for a long time, it's just... The damage output from the Varus early on is gonna be much stronger. Zaya is eventually gonna hard scale, but... Um... I, I think, as far as early lane matchups are concerned, I'm gonna give this to the Varus and the Leona.
But yeah. Alright, but pretty even here. I love that he's playing the gentleman Cho'Gath. That was it. Oh man, early run for Leona, but nice heads up play from them. You want to get away from that. Alright. Okay. If, you, if you're going to stack a wave like that, they need to just hard push into the turret and try to get some plates especially with the leona gone but now they've just given the various ideal an ideal lane position where you can just last hit near his turret and stay safe that no risk of a gank here oh something's going on oh no the craves is going mid Oh, and the Olaf is roaming too. This could go poorly. Yeah, you go. Nice ult from the Azir. Ooh, yeah. Okay, so... Oh, they're gonna lose everything on this, aren't they? But he got his third, uh, second kill up top. Okay, yes, yeah, so this is a bit sloppy in a lot of ways. Sorry. I'm gonna go back. So you got a level four Graves against level six Cho'Gath. Ignore the Azir, because uh, Nunu is going in on the Graves. Easy damage and chomp. Then you have should have all three at that point to turn on the Olaf. Oh, it sets level five too, that's unfortunate. I don't know if the chase would have gotten anything, but I feel like Nautilus might have been able to go for a hook there. Oh, okay, no. He did go for the hook. He just, it was just barely missed. There's a nice roam up there, but ultimately, I don't know if that was a breakdown of communication or they just couldn't decide what target to choose, but. Yep, yeah, okay. I guess it killed back, so the Graves has stalled him behind here. But then they get an easy turret dive there, and two plates off of this. Uh, maybe just one. They are backing off. Ooh, unfortunate that Snowball didn't hit there. Okay. Alright. Early dragon pressure now. And that's a level lead on the graves, so that's nice. And this might be my ignorance on set, but like it's kinda of surprising that he's <laughs> sorry. No, I'm no, no. Nunu and Cho'Gath on the same team is just wonderful. I love it. <laughs> um, it's surprising that he's 3-0, not building any damage. Um, better do not. I think that stacks up his... Uh, is it his W that does the strike? I can't remember. Yeah, it is his W. I don't know if that gives him more. Oh, that was an unfortunate showstopper. Not going exactly as far as he'd like it to. Ooh, the turn. All right, okay, okay. Maybe they'll get some more out, out of this. All right. Ooh, okay. Yeah, the two for one trade is unfortunate. I believe Graves has the Herald. Yep. There's that. So the shutdown gold. 
and the turret plates. So let's take a look here. So we got about to be three going down there, two there, none up top. That's a thousand gold difference there just from the turret plates. And then, yeah, the shutdown gold is huge. 3 0 bot lane up 18 CS. Yeah, every lane has a CS lead. So that's okay. That's where a lot of this 3,000 gold deficit at almost 10 minutes is coming from. So that's a little unfortunate. And this Graves is really. Really likes his invades, doesn't he? Alright, he just got his jungle pet. Okay. He's finding out that all of his camps are gone. Smart to sweep out the wards there. Let's see how top lane's going. A nice pullback. Good trade there. Oh, wasn't able to quite capitalize on the ignite. Olaf is gonna heal some of that back up. Oof. That damage, yeah. The Olaf. I don't know if he just doesn't know the matchup well or he's just overconfident in his abilities. But that was not optimal for him. Oh, the kill, solo kill the mid lane. Damn. Or what happens here? Oh, the hex flash there. I think they've caught somebody, but they get the early six. Or not early six, but six before them. Drives there to clean up. That's unfortunate. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, just a bad trade, and then yeah, easy shuffle for the kill there. That's unfortunate. Yeah, I don't think. Honestly, as Cho'Gath, shouldn't be looking for trades against the Azir. The Azir should be able to just kite backwards and keep you at a distance and do a lot of free damage. I would just be looking to farm up your uh, your passive through the feast and um, just get as much health as you possibly can. A right, nice uh, nice feather storm there. Not enough to save the turret though unfortunately yeah okay Ooh, unfortunate stumble okay yeah they need to have it backed already Oh, they're gonna stay even longer. Oof. I guess it is a cannon wave, and they can predict the turret because the enemy is backed off. But enemy team is just getting a free re a reset here. He's stealing the jungle camps. How rude! Dragon's coming up. It's not a whole lot of vision for blue side here. And by a whole lot, I mean you got those two. So 
not great dragon prep there, and they capitalized off of that. Let's see. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, the stream is shuffle to get him back there, and then there's just no escape. So it's superior vision wins the day, and then they got his flash and an easy kill here, I believe. Yeah. There is Azir's. I mean, he was great on the Ari, he's great on the Azir. That's kind of unfortunate. I mean, they traded a kill up top, they have given the dragon, which is okay. Yeah, it's just Cloud Drake. That's not really gonna benefit them all that great. Getting some more money on the set, I think, is definitely a, a good call here. From what I've seen from Starfighter uh, on his set, it, it, it seems like a, a good comfort pick. Um, he seems to know Champion really well. Um, and I think Set, even though he hasn't been like truly meta in a while, um, still has a lot to offer. So I like him sticking on that. Ooh, the CS leads are climbing everywhere. And that's one thing I haven't been able to see so far um, in any of the games previously is uh, the CS like so I, I don't know if this is how it normally looks or if it's just against this particular team yeah but they have a 5,000 gold lead at 14 minutes because of turret plates and farm so they're not even like that much higher up in kills Oh wait, Mountain Drake is so unfortunate here for the Nunu. He's got so much crap to dodge. It's really good for the team as a whole though, because Cho'Gath and Set would potentially become unkillable. Oh, Set doesn't get anything with that, unfortunately. Ooh, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, so let's see here. They so try for the, the grab there. And set. Is he just trying to get on the Varus? I'm not really sure. The shuffle, the shuffle keeps them. Oh, keeps them perfectly in there. Oh, that's unfortunate. Where happened? What happened to the set here? Sorry. Yeah. So okay. So he tries to get on the various, and that's fine. But then he's just gonna get chain CC'd. Yeah. Okay. And then he just dips. Yes. They're they're giving up on the fight. Whereas he's still going in. Did he just accept his fate? Like, what do what the comms look like there? Oh, but set didn't back up. Okay. It's like the Varus didn't try to get some damage there. Yeah. I always want to call his ultimate the Showmaker because of. The LCK player. The Showstopper. I'm not sure why Showstopper wasn't used at any point. So I think once the Leona chain CC, I probably would use Showstopper into the Graves. Would that have swung the fight? I don't know. But he did get out with his life and so did the Zaya, so that it can't be it's not like the worst thing in the world. Yeah, and he's trying to save a turret that... Yeah, just gotta look for the reset there. I feel like I'm, I'm saying that a lot. Just <laughs> reset, reset, reset. Just knowing when to back. Um, 
is it can be super important. Oh, that was that was a great attempt. I, I saw what they were going for there. Oh, but it's just unfortunate timing. Oh wait, wait, what? Killing spree. Sorry, I'm very confused. Did they just get turret shot? Oh yeah, I didn't see. <laughs> so they get the shutdown on a bit of a fluke. Yeah, it was a, it was a nice idea, and then it just ended up getting. It. Ooh, wait, what was he doing there? Oh, uh, just looking to ward, and then the chain sees beautiful Varus ultimate, and then. Yeah. Let's see, on Avaris, it's just. It's too much. And a nice piercing arrow there. Okay. Yeah, he looks much better than Avaris than he did the Ezreal. <laughs> so I can't get over the nom 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 nom. Oh, yeah, they're, they're running away with us at this point. 10,000 gold lead at 17 minutes. Rift Arrow Charge on there. And I already know they lose this game, but at this point, it pretty much is over. I don't think any amount of uh, bounties is going to save it. Yeah, because once the, the dragon is about to come up, they have no vision down. Really, the only vision they have... I guess they have some right there. They can see when the enemy's coming in, but they have none around the objective itself. Oh, man. His ear just does so much damage. Yeah, I mean, how do you... How do you play against that? See it. That is a major problem in their comp. Is that they have to go. Everybody but Zaya literally has to get in the enemy's face to accomplish anything. And you have one ult that can shut down four players all at once. And that's just. <laughs> That's rough. That's rough to play into. Um, and then... I mean, the Varisalt also kind of shuts it down on its own as well. A lot of the CC does a great job of just peeling for their damage. And... Uh, that's, that's so unfortunate. So, yeah. Um... Everfrost is fine here, I guess. Um, get a nice shutdown there. He got greedy, so. The only problem with Everfrost is nothing is to Olaf. And I don't know when he's going to get close enough to really use it at anybody besides Leona. Um, sorry, I'm going to pause to look at the items here. Um, Heart Steel. I mean, yeah, he's just going basically full health, but okay. So, I mean, the, the Varus is fed. Um, See, is he putting any AP here? No, it's just crit and attack speed. Okay. So the Varus is fed, so I mean, the, the um, Thorn Vest? Not, why am I blanking? The Thorn armor or whatever, you know. 
it's a it, it can be effective against the Varus, I guess. Um, but he's going full crit here. So at that point, crit redu reduction might actually be more beneficial. Um, we got here. Sunfire, increased clear speed, that's fine. Um, what is he building into there? Yeah, I mean, but this here is, is the I think the biggest problem. You've got, yeah, <laughs> two items spike. Needless to say, rod, his boots, and then you got. I mean, he's down. He's down a full item and a half. On this is here. That's rough. And then. Oh, I didn't even notice this until just now. So, yeah, you can tell that a massive part of the gold difference is also in bot lane, considering he's two and a half items in to the not even fully completed uh, Kraken Slayer. That's so unfortunate. And no completed item on the Nautilus either. And they've got Locket already. Yeah. So it's not anything that's wrong with itemization, more or less, but like, but they're just so far behind. It's, it's like, I don't see any way for them to actually win a single team fight. Uh, and it's like, Given the deficit. Oh, jeez. What just happened here? Alright, so they try to go take a flank angle, I guess? I guess they back out. Alright. Oh, no. So you think of the jungler off of that. And there's that crit damage coming in. See, so at this point, as a new new, it's like. Yeah, he's getting his. Magic just that's great for the Azir. But he does not have enough health to deal with the Varus. And the Varus and nobody's gonna touch the Varus till the end of the game. Like for the rest of the game. He's gonna be able to free farm the champions at this point. Which is so unfortunate. Yeah, I would say the biggest thing for me is like you, you might have a game plan going into the draft and know who you want to play, but is there any adaptation happening when you see what the enemies are trying to accomplish? Because the lack of, of range and the need for a hard engage into that team comp makes this almost an impossible task right from the start. Okay, tried... Okay. Holy crap, that damage. He got some good damage down, but at that point you gotta make the call to... They got more... It... Oh, the Azir just gets a free pick on the Nautilus. Oh, I didn't even kill him all the way. He's just... Okay, so, sorry, where are we at here? Let's talk about, let's talk about comms here for a second. So they're obviously posturing for Baron. They're looking to fight near jungle. Immediately gets rooted up. The call to back off should have been made right here. Like. So Cho Cho'Gath was low. Nunu was take too long to move this way. Like as soon as the Varisalt was popped, Nunu should be moving. Cho's low. Set's now moving forward into the team. 
I don't know, possibly thinking maybe we can do enough damage with the new new ult and and what I bring. But then I mean Nautilus is just here on his own against the Azir. That's going to lose this five level difference and you do no damage. So the, the call should be made at this moment here. Or just before this, technically. To back off. Everybody just back off. Regroup. At mid. Um, but instead... We get the dunk here. And good damage down, but... Give up another kill. Saya thinks, I can save Nautilus from the Azir. Does good damage. But ultimately... Gives over another kill and a super free Baron. And I can see that this game does not last much longer from here. Oh, that's unfortunate. I don't see how it could with the 10,000 gold lead that's about to go up to 11 and a half, 12. Yeah, 12 and a half actually. And Olaf is just having a field day down here now. Why is he still fighting this? Sure, you're taking on the support, but why? <laughs> like I said, I mean, the game is obviously going to end on a loss, and it's so far from over. So, yes, like, ultimately, that decision doesn't affect the team, but I don't know why Olaf stayed for that. Did you also have Ragnarok available for that? Because if so, it's even weirder of a decision. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't be afraid to adapt in the, the draft because... Like, ultimately looking at what the mid team is doing, like... You drafted a losing comp. And... I mean, it happens. Even, even professionals lose draft constantly. But... It's such a valuable skill to learn. You know, the Olaf is just free farming back here. Oh my gosh. Okay, so he flashes out and then this is the free farm back here. Oof. And they come in for the flank. Yeah. Like I said, the Varus had everything in his wheelhouse to just yeah, go 12 0 and 4. It's so unfortunate. It's fine though. I mean, this was a. This is going to be a tall task to beat this team. But yeah. Another. Let's see here. He was going for Aegis at that point. Yeah. It's just... The deficit was too large. And a team that's already at the higher skill level is gonna... just run away with that, so... Uh, and they did. So it wasn't exactly how you'd expect. And that's okay. Um, ultimately, we're just trying to learn from this. Uh, see what can be... Uh, gleaned from the footage. Um, but yeah. But I appreciate anybody that watched it. I hope you learned something. I hope I didn't sound like an idiot at any point. Um, feel free to let me know uh, what you think and give me any tips on how I could maybe be a little bit more helpful. Or if you have any footage or anything that you'd like to send in as well, definitely just uh, let me know. Appreciate it.